Stanislaw here with Motion VFX, and in this lesson, we're going to be talking about backgrounds in MO2. MO2 provides four types of backgrounds to really make your compositions pop. By clicking on our background tab in our scene setting, we can reveal the different types of backgrounds included. We have gradients in both radial and linear flavors, environments, images, and drop zones. Let's take a closer look at each one of these. I've opened up Title 02 included with MO2 when you purchase it. I selected my background in my scene setting, and in my gradient, I've chosen radial. Our inner color will determine the inner color of the radial gradient. The outer color will determine the outer color of the radial gradient. Let's make something nice and airy. Our center X and Y controls control the location from which the radial gradient is going to be generated. The radius controls the size of the radial gradient's color ramp. Feather controls the smoothness of the radial gradient's color ramp. The aspect parameter will allow you to set an aspect ratio for the radial gradient. In all our backgrounds, we have our color correction. In here, we can adjust our gamma, hue, saturation, or brightness. Let's move on to our next section and take a look at linear gradients. I've loaded the basic two title so we can take a look at this a little bit more clearly. I'll navigate to my scene settings and click on background again. Here I can see I have my gradient. Color A will determine the color from which the linear color ramp is generated. Color B will determine the color to which the linear color ramp is generated. I've got this nice blue I've already chosen. Now click on this color B and I'll choose this aqua. Point A XY will control the position of the point from which the linear color ramp is generated. By adjusting this, you can see that I have my blue first color sliding over to the left. Point B controls the position of the point to which the linear color ramp is generated. Just like before, our feather control controls the smoothness of the linear color ramp. When using gradient backgrounds, notice that the colors can affect planar reflections. It's very easy to mix and match different kinds of colors to create different looks. I'll just change that back. Now let's move on to motion and take a look at environment backgrounds. I've opened up our Product Presentation 1 project included with MO2. The 3D environment texture is wrapped around a sphere that surrounds the entire MO2 scene and therefore can also be used as an interactive background that will match the camera's viewing direction. Let's take a look at this. Playing back my scene, I can see I have a flat background. I'll move to my inspector, choose my scene settings, select background, and change this to environment. Curiously, we can't see much, so let's investigate our environment. I'll first turn off this blurriness. Clicking on environment, I can open up the environment panel. Clicking on the environment button will load the environment library. Let's choose this corridor. Click OK to confirm. To activate the camera controls, I'll click on my tools and adjust item. I'll click on the active camera and choose perspective for right now. In my perspective camera, I'll use the camera controls to move around my scene. As you can see, because I'm using the environment, it looks as if the camera is rotating around this physical space. In our environment controls, we can change the horizontal offset of our background. Let's change back to our active camera. Playing this back, I can see that the rotation of the background is happening because of the environment layer. That background can be a little distracting. We can choose our background layer and adjust its blurriness. By choosing blurriness, the display background can be softened by choosing from a range of steps available on this list. I'll go ahead and hit heavy. Now we have a nice subtle background that adheres to the rotation of our world 
to give it a more believable, consistent look. There are times, though, that we want a specific image in the background instead of an entire environment. To achieve something like this, we'll click on our background and choose Image. In our image background, a custom image can be used as our new background. There's a variety of designs already available and included with MO2. Let's take a look at these. I'll click on my backgrounds, and that'll launch my background library. Just like in other areas of MO2, clicking on any items in our library will place it into our scene. There's many different looks to choose from, including bokeh categories, gradients, lights, and miscellaneous. I have a favorite selected. I'm going to choose this supernova, and I'll click OK. In our image background parameters, we have a few options. By default, our snap tool will be set to width. The background image is going to be scaled to match the project's width. Changing it to height will cause the background image to be scaled to match the project's height. We can also pan X and Y. These parameters allow for moving the background image horizontally or vertically. Notice that our background is repeated. Our zoom will control the overall size of the background image. Think of this almost like a scale. If I zoom out all the way, we can see our background repeated several times. I'll click on my color correction, and let's make this just a bit more dramatic. Playing this back, I now see that I have a 2D image background. This will look great to present a product on this pedestal. There are times that we may want to use custom video or other motion files as our background. Let's explore the drop zone background. I've opened the title O2 included with the MO2 package. Selecting the background and changing my type to drop zone I'm presented with a Snap2 and Drop Zone Well. I'll go ahead and import a video file that I want to use as my background. Here's a sunset video I shot over the summer. I'll turn off that sunset for right now and click on MO2. I'll drag my sunset into the Drop Zone Well. Playing this back, I can see now that my video is being used as the background for my MO2 project. Let's take a look at some of the parameters that we have here. Just like our images, we have our snap to, and we have our height and our width. We have our pan XY, so we can adjust the framing of our background. In this case, I want to give it just a little bit more sunset. I'll zoom this in just a bit. Lastly, to finish this scene, I'll work with the color correction and brighten this up. So those are our four different backgrounds that we have in MO2. To recap, we have our gradient, which comes in both radial and linear styles. We have our environment, which we can affect with blurriness. We have an image that we can specify and choose our different images. And our drop zone that lets us use any Motion 5 layer or group as our background. Again, my name is Stanislaw Liberta with Motion VFX, and for more information on MO2, including more tutorials, tips, and tricks, please visit motionvfx.com. I'll see you next time. <laughs>